Sometimes it's easy to feel like getting a quality guy to commit is harder than climbing Mount Everest without oxygen or beating a grandmaster at chess. Bad advice that ranges from playing hard to get to becoming sexual early on to simply waiting for his move can make you feel like you have little to no power to attract and enter the relationship you want. So in today's video, I reveal the seven most actionable things that set the most valued women apart from the rest that can get you to go this year from struggling with guys to getting an amazing man to pop the question without losing dignity or playing calculating tricks. I'm excited because what I'm about to share with you right now has the power to help you finally enter this year, the relationship you've been waiting for and hoping for for years, perhaps even decades, or between you starting next year all over again from scratch with a new resolution of fighting your The first thing that sets the most valued women apart from the rest can really help you to enter the relationship you want as soon as possible is to fill your own cup first. Here's what I mean by that. Many human beings, not just women, men as well, have this illusory theory that life can be sucky in some way, and when the right relationship comes along, then life will finally have shine. Life will finally have some meaning. And if you're one of those people who are secretly hoping for your guy to complete your glass so that you can now feel whole and complete in some way, and like life doesn't suck in some way, then you're in for a grave disappointment. The way I've seen this work most powerfully is, and by the way, you don't have to get all your stuff worked out. You don't have to handle all your things. We're all works in progress. But when you fundamentally enter a relationship with the mindset of my glass is full, what does that mean? That means that you're happy with your life. That means that you're connected to what makes you feel joyful and alive and meaningful, that you have a life that you're in love with. Then that's a glass full that when the relationship enter, the guy comes along, there's going to be an overspilling of that glass into greatness. But if the glass is only half full right now, there's so many areas of your life that feel like they're lacking and you have this illusion that the guy is going to fill it up. It never happens that way. That's the recipe for feeling codependent in a relationship. That's the recipe for feeling like it's never enough. That's the recipe for feeling like the guy is your oxygen and afraid of sharing your truth because if you share your truth, he might go away. So if you start this year with a strong commitment that you're going to do everything in your power without being perfect, without there being a final destination, but you being a work in progress, do what you can to fill up your own cup, to feel alive, excited, full of passion. That's going to give you far more options and allow the right relationship to arrive for the right purpose. Number two, simplify your list. Here's what I mean by that. You potentially have, like many men and women out there, a list of qualities you're looking for in a partner that has through some level of misinformation and some entitlement grown to be quite substantial. Not the things you share with your friends, but the things truly inside your heart of hearts that need to be ticked, the boxes that need to be ticked for you to say yes to a guy. So think about it this way. If the first box you have is, I want the guy to be tall. He needs to be six foot tall, for example. That means that in that one, the first criteria that you're deciding on you're doing away in the United States, which is a country where there's relatively decent amount of tall people. You're doing away with at least 90% of guys don't fit your criteria, just with that one. If you have two more, you might be doing away with the majority of the guys out there. So my advice to you is not to choose height or not height. No, I'm not here to say what you should choose. My invitation is that you become very critical of the things that you really tell yourself that you need in order to create that relationship, in order to give a guy a chance, in order for a guy to be your ideal partner. Because the more of those non-negotiables you create, especially if they're more cosmetic in nature, the more you're making it unlikely to find that person unnecessarily. There may be multiple guys out there who might be amazing candidates, but you're saying no to, to subconsciously creating a list of qualities that A, scientifically have been proven to not be the factor in creating happiness, but B, make it really unlikely that you can find that guy who might be a true partner to your soul, to your heart, and to your well-being. Number three, be more generous with your openings. A question I ask every woman who comes in contact with me who some help is, how frequently do you get approached by men in real life? And I get a mix of answers, but if you're in the category of not enough or hardly ever or never, then it's not because you're not beautiful enough. It's not because you're not sexy enough. It's not because you have the wrong weight or the wrong height or the wrong anything. It's because you're not creating enough openings. 
at opening is your capacity to connect with somebody eye to eye and let them know through your being, through your soul, through your smile, through your body language, and through your words that you're open for connection. That doesn't mean saying, I want to be your girlfriend. You're saying, I'm interested in exploring what might be possible. So when you go out and about this year, make sure that you're not looking at your phone, you're not looking down, you're not so deep in your thoughts that you're really missing people around you like horses with blinders, that you can really focus on being present and you can create more flirtatious moments. You can create more openings so guys can approach you and get to know you. Number four, stop looking for your keys onto the lamppost. Here's the analogy. You lose your keys in the middle of the parking lot and it's raining and it's dark and it's not well lit. And you find that you go back to the store and right next to the store, there's a big lamppost with a lot of light and there's some shade, so that means you don't get wet. And you start looking for your keys there. Well, it's comfortable, but you're not gonna find your keys underneath the lamppost if you lost them in the middle of the parking lot. What does that mean? That means that many of you are going from home to work, or worse, working from home, hoping that you'll meet your guy someday. Well, here's the news. If you wanna connect with more men, you have to be willing to go outside of your comfort zone and go to places you don't usually frequent, especially if you adopt the mindset of creating more openings. When you go to that dog park you don't usually frequent, when you take the time to go to that marketing event that maybe you're not super into, but you might find some excitement if you actually pull it off and go. When you try a new gym, when you go to the rock climbing place, you can connect with guys. But if you do the three little comfortable steps you feel at home in, you might be looking for the keys under the lamppost. Now, before I share my last three points, which are some of the most relevant and important ones, if you're a single woman watching this, my hypothesis is after working with so many women, hundreds of women throughout my career, helping them to find amazing partnerships when they hadn't been able to do it before, is that you're not fully aware or not aware at all as you, the true root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken many years of helping women find love and put together a quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds and would reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. All you have to do if you want to find out your answer is go to the first link in the description. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions in 60 seconds or so. You'll have the answer to the question of why you're still single. And better yet, a report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot. What is the number one thing you can do today to reverse the trend you're on and attract the guy you want a fraction of the time? The fifth thing that separates the most valued women from the rest that can help you enter the relationship you want this year is to embrace fire by bonfire. And here's what I mean by that. You can create fire through a match. It will light up in less than a second and it will only last three or four seconds and then it's gone. Or you can turn on fire, a bonfire, which is gonna take time and it's gonna take maybe blowing into the bonfire and maybe putting together the, the wood in such a way that it has enough oxygen. But once it catches fire, it can last for hours and hours. So the analogy here is many of you awesome ladies are going for men who have specific qualities that if they're not revealed to you instantly, if you don't feel that itch, that it factor, that charisma, that explosion of the heart, that passion, that chemistry right away, you might tell the guy that you're not interested or you might tell yourself that the guy is never going to do it for you. And my invitation is that you wait longer, not that you go for guys that, that you never get excited about, but that you give guys a chance who may not be your initial type, who may not be the initial it fact that you've been looking for, but can through depth, through connection, through communication, through vulnerability, help you to find that meaningful friendship and that chemistry that can grow through time instead of feeling that it has to happen instantly. Sixth thing that's going to separate most valued women from the rest and can help you enter what you want is to dance in vulnerability. What does that mean? That means that there is no possibility for a guy to, from his heart, feel truly, I'm going to step up and do whatever I need to do to earn the heart of this woman if he doesn't feel the vulnerability in you because you're afraid to express it, because you're fiercely independent and don't need anything from anyone, do it gradually. If you do the step-by-step -step process of sharing a little bit more and having him share a little bit more and then doing that process again and again, you'll reveal your true heart, your true intentions, your dreams, your fire, your uniqueness to him, and he'll do the same thing to you. And that emotional depth and that connection will give you a greater insight into compatibility, but also will activate the protection mechanism in him that wants to step up and add value to your life, even if it's challenging, even if it's scary. Number seven, be fierce and kind at the same time in expressing your needs. You enjoy when a guy reaches out to you in between dates, 
express it. You prefer for the guy to reach out to you with two days in advance instead of the day of the date? Express it. You want to wait to have sex until you're exclusive? Express it. Be fierce in having boundaries, but kind in your delivery. The difference between saying, dude, you're doing it wrong, to that might be your way of doing it. This is what I would enjoy more. This is what I feel respected by. Would you please, as a favor to me, do it this way? Give him a chance through your clarity and through your kindness to step up for you in ways that he hasn't before and in ways that make clear what's the path he needs to take to earn a place in your heart. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, if you found value in this, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is how I grow and I'm able to help more women. If you click like and subscribe, and if you want to continue learning how to attract the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, stupid tricks, or techniques, then make sure to watch the next video right here.